my name is Brittany, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about some summer book recommendations. It's Brittany, bitch. I have six books for you that give off those summer vibes. They're all very different books, they're all very different genres, but they all give off that summer vibe. You know what I'm saying? So I want to create a list for you that had a whole bunch of different genres for you to choose from, but they all give you that delicious summer vibe. We don't have too much longer of summer. We're pretty much right smack in the middle of it. So I figured this would be a good time to get in your last minute summer fix if you really need it. I think that they all have very good summer vibes and I hope you enjoy my choices. So the first choice for this is naturally The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. And this book is a very well beloved contemporary romance and we're centering on Olive who is the identical twin of Amy and Amy is getting married and then at Amy's wedding everyone gets sick except for Olive and Ethan who are basically like mortal enemies. This is an enemies to lovers trope and it is done deliciously well in this novel. So Olive and Ethan need to go on this like honeymoon package for their siblings because everyone else is sick so they are in forced proximity on a honeymoon in Hawaii. It is beautiful, it is atmospheric. You, you just feel like you're at the beach, you feel like you're in Hawaii. And I feel like, especially if you want that vibe of Hawaii island paradise with some funny enemies to lovers tropes, this is exactly the book for you. I actually ended up giving this 4.5 stars on Goodreads and I really loved it. The next book is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. And this is actually a YA fantasy slash magical realism and it has LGBT representation in this and I absolutely love it. And I just realized that this one also has twin sisters. Totally didn't think about the connection there, but we're following Georgina. She is one of the twins and her sister is named Mary and Georgina and her family live on this tiny little island literally called By the Sea. In this we're basically focusing on like this weird exotic rare bird that's like lived for like hundreds and hundreds of years and everyone comes to By the Sea for this event and then this year the bird doesn't show up and a whole bunch of things ensue and honestly like the best way to describe this is this really felt like a young adult practical magic and if you love that movie you're gonna love this book. The only issues I really have was this definitely reads a little bit like YA. I feel like some of the characters are a little underdeveloped but it's just such a sweet cute story uh, but there is a trigger warning for off-screen rape but it's not at the forefront of the story we're more focusing on Georgina and her experiences and her figuring out her sexuality and her special gift because all the women in her family are like witches and have like a practical gift and she hasn't figured hers out yet this one I could just feel the sea salt spray on my face and I just felt it. It's just one of those, it's very atmospheric and I give this one five stars. The next book I'm gonna recommend is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And I really love this novel when I first read it. I gave it five stars. I still stand by it. I know why people may not like this because it is kind of a, it's historical fiction slash literary fiction. So it could be a little bit slower. It does take place mostly in the past and it's just basically kind of a coming of age story for Kaya. And then when she gets older, someone is murdered and she is, on murder trial. So it's a very interesting story and it can be a little bit slow in the beginning but I don't mind a good slow story sometimes in historical fiction so I can really set this scene and this one just felt summery. She like lives on a river and I could just like feel the heat and the woman who actually wrote this book she is like a wildlife lady. There's a word I'm thinking of but I can't think of it but she literally like studies the wildlife in Africa and like has written like three nonfiction novels about the wildlife in Africa. And so she's really big into wildlife, so that's a really big part of this book. It's a very outdoorsy book. It just feels really outdoorsy. It feels like the whole time you're sitting outside on a porch, sipping some sweet tea, and you can like hear the river, you can hear like the boats on the river, you can hear like the cattails and the breeze. It's just atmospheric. And I definitely recommend this book. I feel like this is also a bit of a mystery because obviously we're trying to find out like who actually murdered this guy. But obviously Kaya has a history with him and it's just, it's such a beautiful coming of age story. The next book is Circe by Madeline Miller. And I'm obsessed with this book as well. I read this last year. It just feels like summer because basically we're following Circe and she deals with gods and goddesses. If you know anything about Greek mythology, Circe is a pretty prominent figure and she gets banished to this island. And again, island, there's just a lot of water. There's a lot of ship journeys. 
I just, I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of a coming of age for her as well. And it just follows Cersei in her life. And again, it's kind of a, this is technically like a fantasy slash mythology. So I would keep that in mind that obviously it goes off of Greek mythology, but it is a fictional retelling. And I just feel like it's so atmospheric of the summertime and like her toiling on her, her island and she's banished there, but she meets people along the way and she helps people and she uses her like witchy gifts for good and she's so protective and just I loved her as a character I just feel like she was so like that silent but strong type I mean the woman literally best gods and goddesses to save the mortal she loves like she is just that bitch the next one is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager and this is a really popular thriller and it's just it has that summer vibe because it takes place at a summer camp so following the past and the present Emma and Emma basically 15 years ago was like the sole survivor of her cabin mates. Like they just like went missing and they could never find them. And then 15 years later, she accepts a job as like an art counselor at the same exact summer camp. And we're trying to find out what exactly happened back then, 15 years ago. And the ending to this one, I really loved personally, like especially for a thriller, not only did I really enjoy like the whole time, like you really don't know who to trust. And Emma is herself an untrustworthy narrator, which I don't really like in books, but was saved by the weird ending. Cause I feel like there was still something in there that just could not be explained. And I really loved that. And it was just, it's one of those endings that I can just picture my brain that right now. Like I could, I could just see it right now. And obviously this has those summer camp vibes because at a summer camp and you can just like feel the heat in the summer. You can like hear the crickets chirping and you can hear the slosh of the water and you feel fear that you're next. The next book is Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vandera. And this book is like fiction, soft sci-fi, a little bit of romance. There's kind of like a contemporary fiction and it just kind of goes a couple different directions. But let me explain. We are following Joe, who is a cancer survivor of the same cancer that killed her mother. And she's a ornithology student going to get her PhD. And she is basically living like this cabin in the woods, um, studying birds for like the entire summer. And one night she finds this little girl who's dirty, who has no shoes, who's named Ursa. And she tells us that she's an alien. She claims she's from Hitraea and she needs to witness five miracles before she can go back to her pinwheel galaxy. And the whole book really is carried by this little girl who is just like the most precious thing you've ever seen. And the whole time you're really wondering like, is she an alien or is she a child who has repressed all these terrible memories of her former life? Is there any truth to her story? And it's just that mystery of her the whole time is just beautiful. This also has a bit of romance in it. I wasn't a big fan of the romance in this novel. I feel like this was definitely like a Nicholas Sparks kind of story. So if you like Nicholas Sparks, this for me is the one for you. Um, I just wasn't a big fan of the romance. I just didn't really feel it. I really loved this story. I love like the soft sci-fi element of it. I loved Ursa. Like she is like one of my like favorite child characters ever. She's just so pure and innocent and like trying to figure out the world. And it was just a beautiful experience, like honestly. So those are the six books I have for you. I hope you find something on this list that you're gonna wanna read for the summertime and give you those summer vibes. But I will just soak up the rest of summer that we have and then it's on to fall. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.